Hello everyone, welcome back to another one of John's never ending list of random things to do. For today's video, I will be working on my 1985 Toyota Celica Supra. The issue here is, when I try to open my sunroof, it just won't open. A look from this view shows that it's getting stuck somewhere. But applying pressure in this corner here, it'll open. Let's try that again. There we go. The sunroof still opens with some assistance. Now it's time to close it back up, and it closes all the way too. Now we know the problem is the initial opening of the sunroof. So it's time to tear this thing apart and see what's wrong. Let's start by opening the sunroof about this far. Going back inside, there are four retainers located here that are securing this panel. All you have to do is fit your finger in here like so and pry it apart. Here's a closer view of the retainers. Now that this panel is no longer secured, go ahead and slide it all the way back. Then close the sunroof completely. The next step is to remove these five 10 millimeter bolts on the passenger side and the driver's side. I'll be starting on the driver's side. Don't forget to remove these shims and you wanna keep track of how many shims you had. Now it's time to remove the 10 millimeter bolts on the passenger side. And again, you want to remove these shims and keep track of how many you had here. Now with everything loose, all you have to do is push the sunroof up and pull it out completely. Now with the sunroof off, you can now see the problem is due to this piece right here. It has completely broken off. And this is the reason why the passenger side needed some assistance to open the sunroof. If yours is getting stuck on the driver's side, yours might be broken on the driver's side. In order to fix this issue, we're going to have to pull off the entire rail. The next step is to pull this weather strip off completely. If your car still has this metal retainer here, you want to place it somewhere where you won't lose it. And with the weather strip removed, it's time to remove this hidden 10mm bolt on the passenger side. To simplify this extraction, you want to use a ratcheting action wrench. And with that bolt loose, go ahead and remove it like so. With the bolt on the passenger side removed, it's time to remove the hidden 10mm bolt on the driver's side. Again use your ratcheting action wrench to simplify this removal. From this view you can see that we just removed this bolt. Now it's time to remove these Phillips screws on the passenger side and the driver's side. And with those screws out of the way, this deflector can be pushed upward to remove the remainder Phillips screws. Once all the screws have been removed, go ahead and remove this deflector and place it somewhere safe. Alright, we're down to the final stretch to removing the rail. Next you will want to remove this trim right here. To do so, you have to start by removing this Phillips screw. Now grip the trim like so and remove it. Then proceed to remove this small Phillips screw. To remove this trim, pull the driver's side down first, then pull it towards the driver's side, and it should just pop right out. Now this doesn't have to be disconnected, we'll just put it to the side somewhere. Taking a look inside here, these are the two final 10mm bolts that have to be removed. Now that all the bolts and screws have been removed, use a prying tool to pry off the rail. You might be wondering, why do we have to pry it off? That's because it's still held down by some adhesive. Once you've pried all the way around the rail, it's time to remove the rail from the car. All you have to do is lift it up like so and pull it out. I left this panel here because once you pull out the rail, it's easily removable. Alright, so here's our removed rail. You'll have to remove some of these pieces, like this one here. All you need is a needle nose plier or any sort of plier. Just grip it like so and pull it out. And you'll want to do the same for the other side as well. Next you'll want to remove this bracket. Then unscrew this Phillips screw. Now this piece can be separated. Now I know this side isn't broken yet, but I'll just go ahead and break it so it can be repaired. Next you want to slide this bracket over like so. So this piece can be pulled out through the front. 
This next part is going to require some muscle. Grip it tight like so, wiggle it back and forth, and try to get it out. Now remember how this side wasn't broken yet? I'm pretty glad I pulled it out. Taking a closer look, you'll see that there are cracks all along here. Moving on to the other side, go ahead and remove this Phillips screw. Go ahead and separate these two pieces. Move this bracket over like so. Then grip this cable really tight. Now remember how we mustered out the other side? Let's find an easier way to pull this out. All you need to do is yank it, and there it goes, it's out. If you accidentally pulled this cable all the way out, don't worry, it'll go right back in. All you have to do is place it here like so, and push it back in. Now before we proceed, let's have a look at the replacement parts. You might be wondering, where did I get these? A big shout out to Billy, who is printing these replacement parts. I'll leave a link to his Facebook page in the video description below. And if you aren't replacing these parts, you might be looking for other goodies that Billy's making. For starters, you might be excited about your new part and you might try to fit it in like so. You'll find it's gonna get stuck. Do not do this. Don't jam it in like so. You'll find that your part's gonna break. Just have a look at this. Now it's time to remove the old pieces. All you need is a cutting tool. Grip it like so and just cut it off. Next, you want to take a quick measurement of your new part against the cable. So you know how much material to remove. I'm going to recommend you remove a little bit more material than this. That way the cable sticks out a little further on the back, allowing you to apply more glue. To remove the plastic from the cable, just use a torch to burn it off. Next, you want to cut off the outer cable. Then remove it completely. Attempting to insert the cable into the part, you'll find it won't fit. In this case, Billy recommends you grind more material off of this cable in order for it to fit into the hole and you'll want to grind it down so you can jam pack it with epoxy glue. Instead of going with Billy's recommendation, I expanded this hole using a 332 bit. Since I'm removing more material, there's a higher chance of this piece breaking. If you go with this method and you get your drill bit spinning, don't put it into reverse. Just keep it spinning one way. I then followed up with a 764 bit. You want to start it off slow so nothing breaks. And once it gets going, just keep it going. You'll see that I put it in reverse here, and it got stuck. Remember to just keep it going one way. Now let's see if it fits. With some effort, it should slide right in. Alright. Next you want to clean your parts as best as possible, and prep them for gluing. You want to jam as much glue as possible down the hole and on the cable as well. Now if you think about the hole that I drilled and how the cable barely fit in it, that means there's barely gonna be any glue holding the two pieces together. So I should have removed more material off of the cable as well. Once the replacement part is in location, wipe down the excess glue. Then let it settle to dry. Here's a quick recommendation. Now let's pretend this wires your steel cable. Now since it's a tight squeeze down this hole, you can barely get any glue in it. But as you can see, the wire is sticking out just a little bit on the back side. And to take advantage of that, you can apply more glue on the back side. Or you can use a ferrule. Or you can even use the end caps for the brake lines of a bike. Now if you're using a ferrule or an end cap, you want to make sure the outer diameter is less than 5mm. And if it's not, you can always grind it down. Or if you have a bunch of these just laying around, all you have to do is remove the insulation. Grip both ends like so, wiggle it back and forth, and it should just pop right out. There should be a line right down the middle, enabling us to open this a lot wider, so it could fit on a bigger cable. Now the end piece can be chopped off. When you're ready to crimp it onto the wire, make sure it's pressed all the way up against the part. Then proceed to crimp it down. 
So if your glue fails at any time, it's still holding the piece together. Next up, we'll want to remove this rivet so we can remove this bump stop. Using a Dremel or an abrasive tool, you'll want to cut off the head of this rivet. Once the head of the rivet has been removed, use a chisel and a hammer to punch it through. Alright. Now we can remove this bump stop to see if the replacement parts fits right in. Now just for testing purposes, I'll slide it in slowly. And you might notice, it gets stuck right where the hole is. To fix this issue, we'll expand the area where the hole is using a 332 drill bit. Now you might be wondering, couldn't we have just done this on the front side? That is true, but the front side has threads for the screw. And I don't think you want to mess that up. So inserting the drill bit into here, you'll notice it gets stuck right where the hole is. So we're going to take off material all along this area, on both the inner sides of the rail. Once your drill bit feels nice and flush inside, your part should fit with little to no effort. Hopefully you've given your glue enough time to dry before you start working on these pieces. And once the glue is dried, it's time to insert this pin. If you take a close look at this pin, this side has splines. You might have an idea to insert it like this, but inserting it this way makes it more difficult to install. You might get the idea to use a hammer to hit it right in. But don't do this, you're gonna break your part. Watch as the piece begins to shatter. This is completely wrong. What you should do instead is, insert the smooth side in first. Then using some pliers, you can press it right in, and it'll just slide right in. Once it has been pressed all the way, the splines will be in the correct location. And since this is the driver's side, the pin should be pointing inside the cabin. Alright, this is looking good. Now moving on to the passenger side. Again, slide the smooth side in first, and you want to make sure it's pointing in the direction of the cabin. Then once you're ready, using your pliers, press the pin in completely. It's finally time to reconstruct the rail. This rail belongs to the passenger side. Therefore, this cable is inserted on the right side. If you accidentally inserted the cable into the wrong hole, once you've reached the replacement part, you'll notice it doesn't align. That just means put it into the other hole. Once you've made it this far, you want to make sure the bottom portion aligns with the rail and it should just slide right in with little to no effort. Now this bump stop can be reinstalled, but instead of using a rivet, we're going to use nuts and bolts, that way it's easier to remove in the future. Each box has 100 pieces, and since I'm only using two, I sent the rest of the packages to Billy. So if you're ordering these sunroof replacement parts, you should get two nuts and bolts while supplies last. Here's a quick look at the nut and the allen head bolt. Insert the bolt from underneath. Apply some thread lock. Then insert the nut. Using your allen tool to hold the bolt, secure the nut down. Now moving on over to the driver's side. The cable goes on the right side, not the left. But again, if you've inserted it into the wrong side, once you've reached the replacement part, you'll notice that it doesn't align. At this point, align the bottom portion with the rail and it should fit with little to no effort. The bump stop can now be reinstalled. Place it here like so. Insert the allen bolt from underneath. Apply some thread lock, then insert the nut. Using your allen tool to secure the bolt, secure the nut down. Reinserting the driver's side cable, make sure you insert it on the right side. Reattach these two pieces. Then reinstall the Phillips screw. On the passenger side, reinsert the cable on the right side. Reattach these two pieces, then screw it down. Now there's one final piece that we have to work on, and that's the pin on this bracket. Now you can use your Dremel or an abrasive tool to remove the outer edges from this pin, or you can simply crush it flat using a pair of pliers. Here's the result for using the backside of a needle nose. It wasn't flat enough, so I ended up using a crimp tool. Now the pin is completely flat, and look how easily it comes out. 
When you're installing this bracket, make sure this tension spring is not on the top side. It's supposed to be on the bottom side. But if you installed it incorrectly, don't worry, it's an easy fix. I'll show you later in the video. To secure these pieces together, here are the items I will be using. I'll also have them linked in the description below. This is a set of clevis pins. And from this kit, we will be using the size M4x20. Here's a quick look at the clevis pin. And it should just slide right in. From the other end, you can see there's a small hole right here. Now you can choose to insert these hairpin cotter pins that will slide right in like so. Or you can choose to install these cotter pin. With these cotter pin, you have to insert it in like so. Then bend the legs open so it doesn't back out. I clamped mine down nice and tight. Then trimmed off the extra pieces. Now that my passenger side is completed, I'll do the same for the driver's side. And with that done, it is time to reinstall the rail. But before the rail goes in, you should slide this panel onto the rail. Now the rail can be reinserted. Since this panel will be getting in the way, just push it all the way back. These Phillips screws can now be reinstalled. Start with the two in the middle. Now the deflector can be placed into position and screwed down. Follow that up by installing this screw at the corner. Then reinsert this bracket here. To reinsert the deflector's arm, insert the front piece in first, then press it down and screw it down. Now go ahead and reinstall the last screw on the driver's side right here. To ensure both brackets starts at the same location, I'll move this all the way up against this metal bracket. And I'll do the same for the other side to ensure both sides are even. Here at the passenger side, go ahead and reinstall this screw. Next, place this bracket here. Then place in the deflector's arm front side first, press it down, then screw it down. Reinstall this last Phillips screw right here. And again, I'll push this side all the way up against this metal bracket to ensure both sides are evenly spaced out. Now we're moving into the cabin. Starting here at the passenger side, reinstall this hidden 10mm bolt and remember to use your ratcheting action wrench. Alright, so this side is installed. Don't forget to do the driver's side as well. Next is to reinstall the motor. Press it back into its location, hold it there, then bolt it down. And here's a quick look of the two bolts. Next, you'll want to insert this trim passenger side first. Once the passenger side has been clipped up, just press the driver's side up and install the short screw. Now this trim can be reinstalled. Just place it here like so and pop it back into its location. Follow that up by installing this long screw. Alright, the trims in this midsection is complete. Now you'll want to move the sunroof brackets back just a bit. Right here looks good. Then place the sunroof in like so. Back inside the cabin, I'll be starting on the passenger side. I'll go ahead and thread these bolts in just a little bit. You don't want to tighten them all the way down because you'll have to reinsert your shims. Since my passenger side originally had two shims, I placed two shims here. Now these bolts can be tightened down. Now moving on towards the front. You'll just want to start these two bolts by hand. Keep these bolts loose. We'll come back to them later. Moving on over to the driver's side. Start threading in these bolts, but don't tighten it down completely. You'll want to leave some room to insert your shims. Since my driver's side originally started with two shims, I will be placing two shims back in here. Now these three 10 mm bolts can be tightened down. Now moving towards the front, 
Insert these two 10mm bolts by hand, and don't tighten it down completely just yet. Now with all the bolts securing the sunroof, you want to close the sunroof to see if there are any gaps. Alright, that's a tight seal. Once you have confirmed there is a tight seal, go ahead and tighten down these two 10mm bolts on the passenger side and the driver's side. Now if you look at this tensioning spring, it's on the wrong side. To fix it, all you have to do is press it down, slide it over, then slide it underneath this pin. Now that everything is properly installed, let's see if this sunroof can open by itself. Alright, this is good. Now let's close it back up and try it again. Alright, this is looking really good. Now you want to open your sunroof about this big, so this panel can be reinstalled. You want to pull it as far as you need it, just so the retainers align with their proper holes. Here's a quick look at the retainers aligned with the proper hole. Now they can be popped back in. Now we're down to the final stretch of this project. Reinsert this weather strip like so, and install it all the way around completely. Finally, place this metal piece right in the middle. And this project is now complete. I hope some of you found this video helpful. If you did and you liked it, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed yet, maybe even consider subscribing. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys for the next random project.